According to the data from Nielsen, Drake accumulated just under 16.5 billion global streams in 2022, and 75% of those streams came from his catalog, mm. not his new album. And this is when we get into the business. What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brandman Sean. I'm Corey. We are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you stream your podcast here at the intersection of creativity and currency. Now, as you guys know, we love to break down case studies in the music industry, whether it's marketing, the business side. And today we got to break down one of the more prolific artists of our generation, Drake. For those of y'all who care about the business, who aren't just looking for random tips because y'all are thinkers and y'all listen and, and apply these to y'all lives to get to y'all's bag, this is going to be a great podcast, right? So for y'all who just want the tips, keep moving, click off. For the, those who are actually mo moving in the music business and want to make career decisions, we got a lot of great information for y'all because this guy, Nathan McCartney, shout out to you, mm -hmm. um, he writes for a publication, which I think is his own, called The Bag. And he did a great article uh, where he presented a business review of Drake's business decisions over the years. We're not going to go over all of it. We'll link the article below. But there's some really strong points where starting off the gate, I want to start with the fact that 77 out of the 256 songs that Drake has commercially released on his projects are certified platinum. 77 out of 256. Yes. What's that like? Like, like 30 percent, 30 40%. 30%. Probably like a little over or whatever, but yeah, 30 percent of the songs he drops have gone platinum. That's crazy. That's a, a one in three chance of going platinum. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> a, a Drake feature must be nice, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, we are making that kind of money because that batting average is pretty ridiculous, as stated in the article. Then you already know there's going to be some success that comes. Because let's imagine that's the primary. How many of these have gone at least gold? Mm -hmm. Even bigger. If you know that level of success is there, once an artist gets to that level of escaping the game and just trying to get some validation, they can think a lot more about the business. Yeah. And we don't focus enough on like the business decisions and how artists like him are moving so then artists can start to see options for themselves. And that's really what I want to get into in this conversation. Because it was reported that... Drake had passed 75 billion streams on Spotify alone earlier this year, um, back in February, for various credits, right? He's been on, obviously, this isn't just his primary songs. These also do include features. Mm -hmm. 75 billion streams equates to $225 million. On the low end, $225 million off of just streams. That's a crazy number, right? But here's... The more important part for me, it says with all of those streams in mind, right, according to the data from Nielsen, Drake accumulated just under 16.5 billion global streams in 2022. And 75% of those streams came from his catalog, mm. not his new albums. That catalog again. And this is when we get into the business. All right. So let's just stop here and think about the economy we're in. So it's like artists are not only competing with the new artists and everything is popping out. You're competing with old artists because people can listen to old music. And you're competing with your old self. Mm -hmm. Sometimes right? people will prefer. And when, hey, <laughs> when people say, hey, if you want the old me, they really can just yeah, go get, the, go, old go get yeah. the old you and not stream any of your new stuff. And when you understand this, though, and really look at these numbers, that puts you in a completely different point of leverage, right? Because if I know that Yes, I'm going to find some new wins to keep myself relevant with this new music, but most of the business is being done on the back end. Then you start thinking differently. And Drake had a comment where he said that he believes artists should actually get milestone bonuses when they do certain things on streaming. In the same way NBA players might, you know, oh, if I was an MVP that year, I get a bonus. If I won a championship that year, if I'm scoring champion this year, or even just score a certain amount of points, I get a bonus. Like, oh, if I get... 2 billion streams, 10 billion streams, there should be bonuses associated with the, that over time yeah. because it also keeps them hungry. It incentivizes them not just for that individual song, but to keep adding to the catalog. What do you think about that point before we go any deeper? No, yeah, I agree. I think it gives them a reason too to 
keep pushing traffic to your platform. You know what I'm saying? Because if I know that, oh, if I get, to your point, if I can hit 10 billion streams on Spotify and I get XYZ certification, I get XYZ bonus, I'm incentivized to push my fans to Spotify. Mm-hmm. And man, even looking at this man, if he got, let's just say, out of 10 billion, like 8 billion of it from there alone, man, that's, I can't even think of the math on that in ad revenue, but that's probably at least a couple hundred million. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? If he's making a couple hundred million back, that means they probably made close to half a billion off right. of the ad revenue. Or at least, uh, you know, think about all the the Spotify users that are keeping Spotify just to listen to their favorite Drake album. You know what I'm saying? Like, like those are things that are hard to quantify, but you know are happening because of the numbers or the milestones that him and, and other artists that are hitting that achieve and the press that comes from it. Because if you think about it, man, it's really only like four of them that do those type of numbers. It's him, a Bad Bunny, a Taylor Swift. So it's like, how often do you as a Spotify or Apple get to even like, run that type of narrative show that that's even possible you know what i'm saying so i do agree like when it's that's hit true. yo we should all be celebrating this win you know that's true because it's probably not gonna happen again for a long ass time i like that idea it's it's the pyramid advertising yeah knowing most will never achieve it but i can show it's possible yeah. and do a couple artists right and this is this is available to all artists yeah. like, <laughs> that, yo, look, look at what drake but, did. but how few will actually get yeah. there um that i mean you know that's obviously the the skeptic and cynical view I look at it from the, the labels and the companies, but it is it just makes sense though. Yeah. All right, for there to be some level of incentive because it is good for all. Mm-hmm. Keeps the artists on your side, allows you to show proof of concept. Keeps you in the news. Keeps you in the news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all that I love. I love that actually. Then also, so they cite that and um, bring up that Justin Bieber future, Dr. Dre. I mean Bruce Springsteen. There's been so many people that sold off catalogs, right? Tiger, which many people were surprised about when that news first came out because it was like 70, 78 million, something like that. I got to interrupt this video real quick to let the artists and managers who are looking to grow know that I have a major announcement because as many of you know, we're bringing out J.R. McKee, who is responsible for selling over 160 million records, literally, along with us, right? We want to meet artists in person. However, many of you guys said, I can't make it to that event, brand man. I really want to make it. And I know that the information is going to be great because I got to see the growth from artists who went last time. Great. Well, we finally broke down and decided to allow artists to get access to a replay 30 days after the event. However, you have to buy your ticket to the event before the event. We're not going to give anybody access to the event or the ability to submit their music for us to listen to if they don't purchase their ticket before the event, before it sells out. As many of y'all know already, there's only 100 tickets available. So you will have the ability to get your music listened to, be considered to have a free one-on-one call with me, J.R. McKee, and Ja'Cory, Also, be shared on our social media platforms amounting to over 200,000 followers and be put in front of our record label distributor and manager friends, the people who can help you grow. And if they want to reach out, like we'll help facilitate that. So that's the quick announcement. October 15th, www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash DC. We'll put the link in the description on YouTube. If you want your music considered, if you want to see this exclusive event that we're only showing in a private space, never putting out this information publicly online, go ahead and grab it before they're sold out. Peace. But Drake did something different, which I wasn't aware of this. So it said that after a little digging, it shows that Aubrey served the copyright, transferred the copyrights of his catalog to 23 Capital. All right. 23 Capital is ran by a guy named Jason Traub and is traditionally known for financing the transfers of European soccer players. Mm. All right. Now, this is when he gets to, into his theory, and I think it's pretty valid. While I don't know this to be a fact, I think that Graham, uh, Drake, for you, I'll just replace Drake. I'm going to just say Drake all these times. I think that Drake pulled off another smart business move. If you're 36 years old and your catalog continues to be where the lion's share of your consumption comes from, 75% in Drake's case, yeah. don't sell it unless you need to. You're young and you still got a lot of building to do. You can increase the value. My guess is that he received a large sum of money that is paid off by the residuals from his catalog with some interest but that he still owns ownership in his body of work. So what does that sound like? It sounds like he got some kind of advance, possibly. Mm -hmm. Instead of selling the ownership, I'm going to, what what word word am I looking for? Uh, Refinance. That's the word I'm looking for. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's it's almost like refinancing (laughs) your own streaming. 
in some so, so to speak. It's not. Yeah. It doesn't add up exactly. But yeah, I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna sell a portion of it, and I'm gonna just keep using it as a pool of capital borrowed again to, to borrow against, and then use that capital to pay uh, for itself instead of selling out the ownership. Yeah. That's actually a beautiful thing. Yeah, and it's smart because like it's like I know I'm going to make this money back. Yeah, you know, so I can see it. So like, what do I have? What do I really have to lose in the situation? Yep. Versus doing it through a label who is going to to the point of the article want ownership of it. Like, cause you know most of these investment firms don't really want ownership of the thing. They just want their money back and more. Yep. You know. So yeah, I think it's smart. Yeah, it's I think crazy. that's something for artists to think about. Like, even if your numbers aren't doing Drake Drake numbers. Maybe you don't need as much money as Drake needs to borrow either, mm -hmm. right? Or to exchange because it's, it's it's not even well. No, it is borrowing because if he's paying back money, though. So again, I want to say this concept It's like, hey, I'm no, I, my streaming is making a million dollars a month. Let's keep the number small and simple. If I know they're making a million dollars a month, I might use that leverage of bringing in a million dollars a month to then borrow ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. Let's say. Knowing I'm gonna make that back in a year, I should be able to get that uh, approved, and then with that ten million dollars, I'll probably pay back a little bit more than that based on how the deal is set up. But I'm only gonna use the money that my my money is already bringing to me mm -hmm. to pay it back. Mm -hmm. So one, I could pay it back. Maybe I pay twelve million dollars back. I paid some more money, but I paid it back in a year, and I still owe my music. And next year, I'm gonna make another twelve million dollars off my catalog. Thinking like that. The financial engineering of all that is just something I feel like, again, artists should be aware of because we hear so many things about deals, but people fail to realize how creative and how differently you can mm -hmm. work a deal. You just need to know who to, who to talk to. Even on a smaller level, we just had an Adrian episode right, that we, we dropped, and it wasn't necessarily a deal, but he had his financing together. He had his credit together. He ended up having those six credit cards, mm -hmm. and he was able to think, yo, I know based on the pace of my streams, I am going to make probably 22K off of the song this year, minimum, based off of this pace. Instead of going with these distros who want to take an ownership of my stuff and split profit share in perpetuity, mm -hmm. or even if they just want to split pro um, the profit in perpetuity, I could literally just borrow with my credit cards. Yeah. So not borrowing from a bank in the traditional, I'm going to go sign and get a, a small business loan. Literally, I'm just going to run up the numbers on my credit cards, $10,000, and in three months, I know I'm going to make this $10,000 back, pay it, and I don't got to deal with nobody. I own 100% of all this. Yeah, I feel like that's the that's the bigger side of it is, is creative financing. You know, that's we, all it is. We, we talk about the label setup. I know the label side of financing, financing is what artists are used to, but... I mean, even the article said, man, like Jason Trout's company is typically investing in soccer players. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's his bag. Yep. Um, we've seen other deals where people have, have. I mean, we've even had clients who's had investors that were like own fishing companies and just like mm -hmm. the most random things, man. Like Aris, you would be surprised at who wants to get into the music industry. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> like who who looks at you as a vehicle into music? Um, and then the. I remember. Uh Tech Nine, his investor and business partner, that or, the OG who started all with him and got his business going to another level, had like a furniture store or something. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah, crazy. that's where he made his like millions that he had made at the time. That's what I'm saying, man. We always make the joke about everybody wanting to get into music as an artist, but now there are some people out there who just want like a foot in it. They don't care how they get in it. Yep. Can I give you some money? Can I can I buy you equipment? Can I invest in X Y Z Avenue? And though there are more of those people out there than there are labels, you know what I'm saying? Way more. Way more, you know what I'm saying? And then as you can kind of see with this Drake situation, you know, we don't know all the terms of the agreement, but they're usually way more fair. Because like I said, whereas like labels and distributors and, and things like that typically want a certain portion of ownership for a certain length of time, most of these like independent investors just want their money back plus interest. You know, like you said, if I give you $10 million, Give me twelve million back and the opportunity to do business with you again, and I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? We good. You know what I'm saying? We yep. good as, as far as I'm concerned. And that's what's great. That's what's great about it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's bro. It's so big. And again, I know people might hear these numbers and think, "Oh, well, Drake is Drake." Or in Adrian situation, well, you shouldn't just go get a credit card. We're not advising anybody to do any of these things in particular. What we're advising is thinking. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's what Doing some people else. miss, right? So I'll make a quick comment about one of the guys who, uh, <laughs> well, not one of like mo multiple people. Sometimes when we talk about like shorting videos or things like that, instead of doing a conversational style like this, straight up, I know when we're making our conversational videos, therefore a certain type of person who's probably gonna learn and apply. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're thinking, they're strategizing on a whole another level. Cause you can't get that in tips videos. If I just give her a bunch of random tips, those are the people who are looking for tell me what to do. And then the reality is everything we say doesn't plug and play into what your to life is. Yep. We don't know you. We're just having a conversation here. Yep. We could talk about what's working for a lot of people or what's worked for some of our clients in the moment, but it doesn't mean it's gonna work for you exactly. So we always try to advocate for you to think. Yeah. So you don't be like, oh, well, Sean told me this or AJ Corey told me this. I mean, oh, my brother, you walked yourself. Yeah, that path. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, best believe we will lead you in the best direction we can or, or a rabbit hole that you should explore and then make the decision mm -hmm. for yourself based on what you find out while you explore that, yep. that rabbit hole. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. But <laughs> just because I said I found me some, you know, a, a nice set of shirts and bro, they had a whole bunch of larges when I was there. When you go. They might be out of largest. Yeah, man. The word might have already got out, so it's not for you. Whatever happened, the market changed. So you know, I just want to say that because, again, the Adrian deal, the Drake deal, is not, it's not about what they did specifically. It's about the thought of you being more creative in how you approach these deals because the label infrastructure gets people thinking that this is how deals work. Yeah, this is the only way, man. It's just context. All we can do is give you context. And yes. whatever you do with that context and the information is up to you. We have talked about this before, man. Y'all, as the audience, have to stop looking for reasons to blame the content creators that you're watching when most of them are just giving you information to make your own decisions. See what I'm saying? Nobody wants to make their own decision anymore, man. See, a lot of them don't <laughs> position it that way. A lot of these con content creators don't be doing that, though. They well, really what are you right? We, like know, we give we information, you know what I'm saying? It is so you can ingest it, sit on it while you eat right. your breakfast, while you drive to work, and then think about it all day and then make your own decision on it. Right. Because I've learned a lot of artists want you to think for them so they can have somebody to blame, and I'm not going to give you all the satisfaction. That is a fact. <laughs> that is a fact. And that's why we do, We started the podcast with Civic episodes again. Yep. Um, I'm just scratching my mic. That's probably going to be bad on the audio. But <laughs> we, that's why we the pod specific episodes are for those people where we are, you know, the type of artists that we talk to and they give mm -hmm. us commentary on the podcast episodes, we know it's different than the ones who watch the other episodes. It's mm -hmm. not that there's no never any overlap, but it's usually the ones who, you know, yep. they're more thoughtful, yep. they're more strategic. And year over year, we see a little bit more growth in their careers, you know what I mean? Yep. So with that being said, another gem that I think all of y'all would appreciate, particularly the pod lovers, is drakerelated.com. Oh, this the merch joint? Yeah. Yeah, this joint crazy. Yeah. So, he did a partnership with Spotify. And if you go to Drake's website, drakerelated.com, you'll be able to see he has all types of items. And it's listed in a room. EJ, if you could put this on the, on the you video. You a book? Yeah. What? Yep. He has a book. Titles ruin everything. A stream consciousness, a stream of consciousness by Drake and Kenza Samir, and this is the cool part about it. What did you just hear Jacory say? He said he wrote a book. This is literally a, a way that people can discover what to buy from Drake. I just don't understand how, as much as I stay on the internet, I never, I never saw that. Again, we know. <laughs> uh, I learned this from just what we do. No matter what and how much do we talk about some things, there will always be somebody who doesn't know. Yeah, facts. All right? That's facts. That's true. Like You just can't get all of your fan base to know because of the algorithm's not showing it to everybody. People are busy. Everybody's not going to open every email. All that great stuff. So the way he has this his website set up, right, it's a studio, This is for lack of better words. And again, we'll show a little bit of the picture on screen, and you can go and you can just click random items. And our defective garment hoodie, one hundred seventy dollars. So that looks like that's official with Nike. Is that a Nike check yeah, it's on a Nike it? Nike check. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That yeah. That's yeah. hard though. I can't lie. It, it is. It is. Nice, nice little. You can go check out all the albums. Like literally, this is just a comprehensive way for everything Drake related. Just straightforward. It's a beautiful a setup in terms of just an e-commerce, um, exper experiential 
way of letting your fans get whatever they want whenever they can. And I like the front page not being going straight to merch, but being that room set up because, mm-hmm. again, it makes people want to click around. Mm-hmm. Like, what is this? And, again, we'll let y'all click through all that. But anytime you can make anything an experience, it's always going to be dope from a business standpoint mm-hmm. when you market it to your fans, you already have them. But, of course, he did this in partnership with Shopify. So the inspiration I take from something like this is how can I partner with the brand and leverage their platform Mm -hmm. to do something special instead of, hey, I'm just going to use this page. I'm just going to do a Shopify site. Nah. And I'm going to do a leverage to. I'm going to do a leverage deal to then get like a sponsorship from them. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to talk about them in the ad. No, like, how can I make this deeper? Oh, I'm going to do it a whole experience that's cool to my fans, build my brand equity, makes me look even more like an artist, you know, cool person, whatever you're trying to be. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the company has something to talk about, too, because you can market the fact that I did this experience versus if I just say, oh, yeah, check out uh, Shopify for your websites or, hey, I got a Shopify store. I'm like, all right, cool. There's another Shopify store. There's nothing for me to talk about or market or write our billboard articles on mm-hmm. if I just do it that way. So whenever you can do something that's worth talking about and you can market and just get your name back out there, you're always going to win from multiple sides of the business. So, yeah, no, I like I like this before. We can't talk too deep about it because I feel like it's even better for everybody to experience and click on. Yeah, we can't be giving out spoilers. Yeah, it can't give out too many spoilers, but he has all his partnerships. It's a, it's a really clean website experience. While we look at that, you know, as a quick aside, well, we talked about it. I don't even think we should we could show we should show it, but uh, Travis Scott had his merch experience oh, yeah. that he dropped too. Yeah, that's yeah, worth people looking at crazy. as well. And his was very good with the upsells. Mm-hmm. Nice little sales funnel feel to it. Yep, yep. It was like they was using click funnels. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, so it, so y'all definitely check Travis is out as well because his is worth again just gleaning inspiration from. But back to Drake and his business decisions. Here's another example: Air Drake. In 2019, Drake received a free 185 million Boeing 767 from his long-term partnership with Canadian airline company Cargo Jet. Now again. Obviously, everybody might not be getting 185 million free jets, but there's a lot that can be gleaned from this, right, in terms of how you apply creatively. One, obviously, just having a jet is dope because you're saving some money, right, instead of having to pay, right? <laughs> so how can we flip a deal instead of taking on an expense? Maybe there's something that you want to do that is a constant expense, and maybe I can find a company to partner with and hey, get that for free. And now I'm advertising for them. Beautiful partnership, mutual, because obviously Drake is Drake, and wherever he goes, being able to uh, market that company is beneficial for them. But this is when I get into the things, when I think about how other artists can even apply certain things like this to their own selves, because Drake didn't just take the jet and say, I want to run, like fly around, I got a free jet, whoop de doo He said, yo, I'm going to get Virgil a blow to paint this jet. Yep, using his nothing was the same as inspiration. All right, so you see clouds just like the cover. One of the most classic. This is probably the most classic Drake cover, maybe. Maybe tied for, it's within the top two or three yeah, for it's sure. Top three. It's easily top three. So, so we don't even get into that discussion. Let's just say top three. It's <laughs> easily up there. All right? So Virgil Blow threw it, did nods to one, the nothing was the same cover by having the clouds and things like that. We'll have this on the. Um, video for those who are watching and then also across the bottom of the jet as you talked about Jacory it says if you're reading this we left written on the bottom of the jet alluding to another Drake project right mm-hmm. so one he made it his and what so and this is just cool in general but using an artist like Virgil Abloh right or even if you can't work with it, Virgil Abloh using an artist that has it's just dope. You might be putting them on to the rest of the world, right? Or putting the rest of the world on to them. It's funny I said that given we're talking about Drake. You know what I mean? <laughs> but well, like using the collaborations is something that more artists can do, and you don't have to be big for that. Yeah, yeah. Like just finding somebody dope and sh- and kind of um, 
a and Ring talent and making them a part of your campaign. Yeah. All right? It's like finding someone else who speaks to the same culture of people as me, even if they're not necessarily as big as me. I just need the culture that I, I want to talk to to know you exist. To know you exist. Exactly. And it makes me cooler because even if they don't know them, I'm putting them on to this art. Mm -hmm. And it's five to their family. Like, oh, man. Like you said, oh, man, it's crazy that Drake and Virgil work together. That's so cool to see. That's how fans think, man. Like, they don't, in that moment, they don't think about size and status. I just think about, I know Drake, I know Virgil. It's nice to see them come together and work on something. Right. And again, even if you pull the artist on complete obscurity, I think you can get a lot of benefit from something like this just because, one, you're going to have this creative uh, design and packaging of whatever your product is, whatever you put out, whether it's your shirts that you did for yourself, whether it's um, a car that you ride around in and you had an artist do it instead of just flashing a regular expensive car. It's like you could get a cheaper car and then have an artist design, like do something interesting to it and now it sticks out more and it, and it mean, it's more meaningful as a brand piece than just having a fancy car. Yeah, I do. That's kind of crazy. That's why. That's why when artists be like, "Man, I do my own cover art. I do my own X, Y, Z." I'm like, "Man, you lose not on, on the collaboration, the power of collaboration, man. Like the the brand equity, the 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 extra extra audience that you get to tap into, the extra audience and extra perspective. If it's an yeah. actual dope artist, yeah, like all because you want to be selfish and, and cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't mean you have to do it for every project. Maybe you do every cover except this one pro cover, you know." You're very selective about it, right? Because you have the ability to do it yourself. So you're mindful of who you choose. And now they can bring something extra. And y'all can market this collaboration happen. Well, it's like, in, instead of, I think a lot of times, people do these normal deals or these, re or they miss the opportunity to make regular actions special by not making it a collaboration, by not sprucing up the packaging. How many times do we buy something and pay more money just because the packaging is better. All right? If I could add up all the dollars, man. If I could add up all the dollars. <laughs> Same reason and why we talk about stuff. We will talk about something a little bit more than we would something else just because of how the whole situation got packaged. So, again, I, when I see this type of situation, yes, you could on the service say, oh, man, Drake has a lot of money and he has a lot of leverage, so a company wants to do a deal with him. But you can also say, well, how, what elements out of this were dope that I can achieve? And the collaboration with visual artists is very, very achievable. Yeah, I agree. Probably one of the, now that you kind of say it, probably one of the easiest to achieve uh, collaboration that any artist can do. Yeah, I didn't think about it that way. And if you do it often, you know, you can start getting a little bit of a brand as somebody who puts people on to dope visual artists. Yeah, it's true. You know Make a little wave in the art world. Next thing you know, that little lane opens up for you. That's a good point, man. It opens, man. Good point. All right, it's just going down these rabbit holes, and they all lead to new forms of business, marketing, and ultimately an overall better creative world, which is obviously what we want to be at the core of what we do anyway. So this it's not just about that surface level of business. Like, how do you do it in a way that it builds your world, your lore, and how people experience you creatively. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about in Drake, what were these shoes? Cause I was telling you, I wasn't aware that Drake had so many shoe collabs that he did, um, or shoot, so many fashion collabs he did in general. So let's read this. Um, Oliver, one of Drake's partners said, we started creating product out of necessity. There was a lot of traveling and different clients. So we needed practical, versatile garments that looked stylish while also being recognizable. <laughs> to security as well as at business meetings. That's interesting. See, sometimes some of this stuff I reads as like fake marketer way of why we created this fashion out of necessity. But the specificity of being recognizable to security, but also at business meetings, I guess like also we, we, it doesn't look too wild to be at a business meeting. That's interesting. It's interesting that he said that, but so using those type of things as your central, your inspiration, I like that idea because we do create a lot of stuff out of necessity in general. I'm not like not necessarily even a fashion brand or something like that, but we do. Um, so he said with El Khatib at the helm, the OVO brand has done a number of successful collaborations and partnerships. Most recently, they've announced partnerships with major sports leagues like MLS, NFL, and the NBA. Drake loves sports, so that's in his realm. What is your realm? This is in, a, in addition 
to collections with Disney, Playboy, A Bathing Ape, and Canada Goose among Where's that many. Disney? Did you say yes. Disney? That's crazy. Disney. We can do a Disney collab. I'm not yeah, we gotta see what this Disney collab is from, from Drake. He just wanted to be in with Disney. Wanna be able to say it. Sometimes you make the move <laughs> for a later move. You do it just to say you did it. This move was mid, but now I can say I did it. I did business with Disney, and I probably built some relationships that are beneficial in biz Disney. Right. Showed them a little bit of my leverage. That's what I better see this fast, which is a real move. Show a little bit of your leverage just so you can benefit further in the down, um, further down the line. It also can work against you. Yeah, cause, I mean, yeah, but most people aren't going to do what we did and actually go look at it. They're going to be like, oh, you work with Disney? That's cool, and leave it at that. They're not going to go look at it and be like, oh, but that shit you did was whack. <laughs> it's gonna be like oh you did it that's Paul. yeah 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 and when i say they can pl work against you so diddy did the Ciroc deal just so he could make lever get leverage with diageo and he went eventually wanted to own his own tequila where she is with daily on but he what, didn't have any ownership with you know Ciroc. so he was trying to prove himself and he did he did historical shit bringing that brand to you know well, relevance yeah. basically saved him, but he didn't have any ownership, and now he's experiencing this monkey bar situation of just not being a profit share owner, but having a true ownership partnership where we're also benefiting together. And Diageo is like, eh, we're not really going to support you, Howard Body. That's what Diddy's saying, yeah. allegedly, right? I think proving yourself is a good strategy, but also it. If you want to use that angle and call it that, but it's also the pain that Kanye, Diddy, and many of these other guys go through by not wanting to wait. Because Diddy himself said he was being a little impatient. He didn't want to wait to build something from ground zero. He wanted to take something that was already activated and then just use his marketing brain and blow shit up. A lot of times in music, people get so attached to the marketing side of it because that's what they do. And then they are they don't want to build things up. They want to get straight to it. And, and, and when you don't go through the... The minutia of building a business is all good because the money's good, the brand's good, but then ultimately, again and again, we lead to these same conversations of Kanye or Diddy saying, yo, well, I don't have ownership and I just did X, Y, and Z and they should give me, I deserve it because I made them this much money. I don't know if it adds up that way. You know how many times has a business made, um, like has an employee made money for a business, but that don't mean you should own McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? If anybody, if, if anybody know, Diddy know. <laughs> If anybody know, did he know? You should have leverage. <laughs> but, uh, all right, no, actually, I thought you were going a different direction. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you're going a whole nother yeah, direction. Yeah. If anybody know that, did he know that, you, bro? Like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're going that direction. If anybody know, allegedly, did he should know. <laughs> and be aware that making somebody money doesn't necessarily... Um, mean that they will get ownership or deserve certain things, right? It doesn't add up that clean. I think sometimes maybe we forget that when we go into these other sides of business. But, you know, I don't say that to take away from anybody who's done these deals. But, you know, I don't think we should be shocked when people don't necessarily see us in the same light as yeah, what we yeah, see ourselves. Yeah, definitely, man. You're, you're <laughs> a superhero to everybody, man. Right, right. <laughs> like Diddy 100% brought hella leverage to, to rock. But hey, yeah, you're just one of our brands. Yeah, man, you just were a, a successful brand ambassador. Yeah. We appreciate you for that. Glad you did that. But it was wild to me because a lot of people are just figuring that out. And I read this years ago, and it, but it shocked me when I read it. I was like, wait, Diddy's own. If I remember correctly, the way I read it, I was like, wait, I didn't realize Diddy didn't own any of this. Cause I, and it wasn't saying that he didn't own it. I was just reading what the agreement was, and I was like, wait, hold up, this is a profit sharing agreement. Uh, he basically has exclusive rights, and he has exclusive rights to North America. So it's like it's not even worldwide. Like, oh snap, he's blowing up the brand, and he's letting me experience it in North America. But when I go to, you know, wherever overseas, I'm out in Paris and I'm drinking Ciroc. Diddy ain't getting that cut, which is crazy, based on my initial perception of Diddy's positioning with with Ciroc. So of course, again these. Diddy, in his words, basically said, sometimes you have to do deals like this as well, kind of just to get your foot in the door. Again, just trying to show and prove. So, look, that's just the, the cost that you weigh. Also doing business. And I do appreciate it about Diddy, man. It's like, even though I don't own it, I'm going to work it like it's mine. You know what I'm saying? Which, look, you know, will take you far. 
Now, see, that's a whole other conversation because that's a real entrepreneurial person versus how a lot of these artists look at stuff, right? And how people complain because you're looking at a situation. I want to be done completely fair, what I perceive fair to be from day one, right? One, fair is a sliding scale depending on who you're talking to and things change over time. But somebody like Diddy is probably looking at it like no matter what, especially with the marketing mind too. One, I'm going to get be able to sell this thing. So I'm going to get more money just to be able to sell it, period. Like I'm getting the profit share. That's great. That's part number one. We're just talking straight money. But then the entrepreneur is going to go beyond that and say, me proving myself, even if Ciroc, well, Diageo, the company that owns Ciroc, doesn't give me a deal or do me right, I now have this in my portfolio, which extends my brand beyond, oh, yeah, here's this hip-hop guy within music. Oh, here's this guy who creates street products, like uh, street clothes for for hip-hop artists, which he even talked about wanting to expand his brand beyond that. We should break down that video separately or whatever, and why he did suits and stuff like that, because he didn't want to just be a street brand. It's like, oh, well, so, okay, so this alcohol makes my brand a little bit more expansive as an entrepreneur and, um, and mogul than just doing these other deals. So there's more value to just me owning as well. And then also, I get to learn the business, right? So these, there's all these other points of value when you make a strategic decision beyond just do you own. Because you would say, well, Diddy wasn't like a brand new artist. Um, or brand new businessman. He this was in two thousand three, after the whole Diddy, I mean Biggie, Mace, Mary J. Blige, all all of that. And he had plenty of good business mentors behind him, so he knew quite a bit, yeah. right? This guy wasn't new to it, so why would he still do it if he didn't own? There's so many benefits beyond ownership, and sometimes we get short sighted with just the conversation of ownership, let alone the conversation between ownership and control, which are two completely different things. People don't realize it. Because, hey, you can own it, but if I control what you can do with it and I got to say, yes, no, maybe so, you got to run it through me first. Ah, hey, sure, but you can market that you own it, though. Go ahead, play it, say what you got to say on the front end. Yeah. Just know that, you know, before you do that, you got to talk with me. So, like, that, those are some of the things that this Drake, uh, these apparel agreements and things made me think of. He did a, quite a few sneaker drops and things like that we don't need to spend much time if y'all are interested in, in learning more about drake and some of his business decisions we will drop it again in the description of this video on youtube but also going forward most of the full pods um will be just on the dsps we're not making a switch immediately and we'll start talking about it for y'all um, on the next few podcasts just to remind y'all we're gonna drop clips on youtube just for algorithm sake all right, um, instead of full episodes and the way this particular demographic works, and then we'll have the full episodes for y'all who really want to get to it and get all the gems on Spotify and other DSPs. But again, this is just yet another episode. If y'all like episodes like this, let us know in the comment section as well. Um, I'm Brand Man Sean. I ain't forgot who you are. That's crazy. I'm Corey. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> it's a difference. Never forget who I am, bro. What you mean? <laughs> I know who I am. <laughs> And we out. Peace.